Hi, uh, so my name's David and I help out with the social media and marketing here at National Student Pride. Uh, this is now my second year helping out and uh, I'm going to be the next person to talk about my story and, and share how I came out at 14 uh, to a Catholic school in Glasgow, of all places. <laughs> so I sort of realised that I was gay, I must have been about 12 years old and a lot of it kind of came from... I guess just things just clicking in, you know, uh, to use stereotypes, I was never the football player, um, I was never, I, I, used to, I used to pretend to go shopping rather than um, doing any sports, which is hence why I was a little fat kid. So I, I was like, almost like a stereotype, but I, I've always had this, um, I guess not, not overtly feminine um, personality, so I, it kind of like slid under the radar a little bit. Um, but when I was 14, I, I'd sort of kind of realised in my head through uh, internet searches and, and things like this. And I realised that I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not attracted to women. I'm, I'm, I'm much more attracted to men. And the reason why I realised that was because it would take a beautiful woman for me to even look at going by. And it would take just about any man to walk by. And I'd be like, oh... So I came out, uh, I came out to my, my best friend at the time uh, over uh, like MSN, um, which dates this uh, already. And I came out and I, I, I said to her, I think I'm gay. It was, it was lovely, like she was so supportive. I knew that her family had a, uh, one of her cousins was gay. So I was like very, very happy to tell her. And I, I, so I came out and the next day in school was perfect and it was lovely and I, was sort of like accepted for like one of the first times ever which just felt lovely um and we ended up telling one of my other friends about a week or so later who was not just like accepting of it but like almost like enthusiastic about me coming out and I was like oh my god this this is exactly what I wanted and I remember going to bed that night and I was so happy and I remember being almost like giddy with excitement that I was in a group of friends who just trusted me and loved me and I, it was it was great um but this is a, that's a boring story but here it gets to the exciting bit um we fell out uh, a couple of weeks later almost rightfully so because i kind of got into this rhythm of acting up of what a gay man was supposed to be you know it was it was a bit bitchy it was a bit in your face. Um, I, I was never a camp person, but I was, I was being someone who I didn't like. Uh, every thought that came into my head was something that I would say about someone else. So when we fell out, she told everybody what I'd said. Um, and she also told everybody that I was gay. So I was 14. Um, the entire school knew that I was gay. And um, I remember we walking to class. I think it was drama of all things. And this person walked up to me and was like, are you gay? And I was like, what, what, no? And he's like, well, I heard that you are gay. What, what? It's like, your whole like throat is just crunched up and you're like panicking. And I was like, oh my God, like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I ran into the class and I was sitting with my friend who I'd, I'd told before, uh, who I hadn't fallen out with at the time and I was like, what, what, what have you said? What have you done? What's going on? And she was like, nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, and it found out that this other girl had told everybody. And so I was sitting at 14 with no friends. So it got worse. Uh, this girl sort of like, she was a bit of a bully. She was a bit of a bitch. She kept at it and at it and at it and kept kind of pushing it further and further and further. And, and any time we tried to like make amends, it was pushed further. Um, and I messaged her and said look can we just leave this like can we stop it um i don't i don't i've lost this argument i get it i was a bitch and i'm sorry um are you getting upset you're gonna kill yourself and i remember being like whoa whoa kill myself i don't i don't where did that come from um and she said if you're gonna kill yourself put put the camera on um because we would like to see you kill yourself and you've got no friends so why would you not kill yourself and at the time, I don't remember it being that big a deal. But in hindsight, I remember looking back and thinking, 
Jesus Christ, that is a horrible, horrible thing to say to a 14 year old that's just come out as gay. That's a disgusting thing to say. And if I had had maybe just a little bit, you know, worse mental health, maybe something would have happened. She then threatened to tell my mum that I was gay. And my my mum was, you know, she wasn't homophobic, but she, I, she never said anything very, very nice about being gay. So I wrote a letter um, and basically apologised to my mum that I was gay. Um, the first and last apology since. And I left it on her bedside cabinet uh, when you went to school because she used to work night shifts so she wouldn't be up in the morning because she'd just been back from work um, and I left it there and I uh, went to school and I came back uh, I had to get pushed back into the, the house because I was terrified as you'd imagine and I had a big backpack on and um, I, I smashed a good radiator cover that my mum had and it just like glass was everywhere and she was just like come upstairs um, and my aunt, who I was, I was very close to, was sitting at, at the next door and just like ignored me walking in. Um, which was somehow there was the worst part of it, right? Because we were in such a close relationship that it was hard. Um, and my mum just said to me, "Look, I, I, I had an inkling, and she cried, and she cried, um, and she was like, I just want to make sure that you're all right and that you're going to be fine and that you're going to be okay." I remember not feeling very good about it, but I remember just feeling like, get me out of here, I need to leave here. And so I, I, I went into my room and I, I, I just kind of like fell asleep. I was so exhausted, so terrified of everything that was happening. Um, and my mum kind of went over the course of the next couple of years, slowly kind of got more and more used to it. Um, she, she was always protective of me. Uh, every single thing she ever thought of was not of a, of a hatred towards gay people or anything. It was, it was a genuine fear that she was gonna wake up one day and find out that something happened to me by someone else. But she was quite problematic at the same time of she must have been any of my clothes that were poofy or, or gay and um so that 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 made it feel uncomfortable. Um but you know I now sit here a long time since coming out and almost kinda happy that it happened when it happened, not how it happened, because I think any kid doesn't deserve that, but I'm glad it did happen when it happened, and I'm glad that I sit here now, God, nearly 15 years later, been able to say, I'm gay, this never been an issue for me. Do you know, I've never been worried about walking into a, a workplace and saying, I'm gay, what are you gonna, like, is, is there a problem with that? Because there is, see you later. Um, and I come from a working class background where I shouldn't be saying no to jobs. But it's it's that's always been ingrained in me of like, I am a gay person, so what? Um, and that's the way I've lived my life because it's been this long and it's been this kind of comfortable and I know that's not for everybody and I know a lot of people don't have that. Um, but that's one thing that I'm happy with uh, from the whole experience. But yeah, that, that's, that was my coming out. There's... Um, a lot more that we want to do about sharing story around body image within the LGBT community, uh, feminism between the LGBT community, race and racism. Um, there's so much more outside of just, you know, one little Scottish guy's uh, coming out to his parents. Um, but yeah, it's bad people, bad times. They are finite and they will go away. Um, and if anyone ever tells you that it's time for you to kill yourself and, and, and not live your life, um, just cut that person out. Doesn't matter who it is. Family, not family, friends, best friends. And uh, and, and seek help when you can, because I should have, because there was a lot of ingrained stuff up here that took a long time to get rid of because of what other people said. And um, it's not acceptable, but yeah. Thanks very much for listening and um, we're going to put out more of these, share your stories uh, all the way up until the event um, next year. But yeah, thanks very much and um, yeah, speak to you later. Bye.